I can tell you about a problem that exists in your business right now. And by the end of this podcast, you'll know exactly how to solve it. Later on in the episode, we're going to hear from Annie with this week's TechSess Tech Update. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the episode for this week's intriguing Intel of the Week and Gigglebytes. But before we get into the episode, if you're the person responsible for dealing with the IT and cybersecurity in the business, then you've come to the right podcast. Every Wednesday, we upload a new episode packed with information to help you ensure you get the right technology and security in place. So if that's of interest to you, go ahead and hit that follow button in your podcast app. Okay, let's get into today's episode. So I promised that I could tell you that you have a problem in your business right now. And the reason I know this is because 57% of your staff are writing down passwords on sticky notes and probably sticking them somewhere to their monitor or somewhere on their desk. So the problem we're talking about is passwords. And if you've listened to any episodes of TechSess, it's probably the most common thing that I've talked about. And for quite good reason, it is the biggest problem, right? It all comes down to something which has been around forever and we still don't have a better solution for it. So while it's still the biggest problem, we need to actually deal with this. So I'm going to share some interesting statistics with you to help you understand just how big a problem this actually is for businesses. So 55% of employees are actually storing business credentials on their mobile phones. And 51% of those passwords are stored on their computer. So they're actually storing more business credentials on their own phone than what they are on their company computer. And your employees are still using weak and easily guessed passwords. 31% are actually using their child's name or birthdays in their passwords. 34% are using their husband or wife's name or birthday in their passwords. And 37% are actually using your business's name in the passwords. And actually, I've seen this one quite a lot because when we look at the dark web breaches, it's one thing that we do is dark web monitoring for businesses. We see quite often in breach passwords that password is actually the company name and then followed by, say, the year the company was founded or the year the employee started there. And 44% of staff are reusing passwords across their personal and their work-related accounts. Here's something that's really shocking, is that employees are actually sharing passwords insecurely with other unauthorized parties. Reports say that 62% of staff will share work-related passwords over text messages or email the employers out there, if you're a business owner listening to this, you've got bad habits in here too. 46% of companies let new employees log into systems using old credentials from previous staff members. So we're all to blame here. And what happens with breach passwords? Well, it leaves you open to cybercrime. So costly data breaches, destructive malware, account takeovers, and insider threats. So I think we can agree that this is a pretty common problem. And unless you're using a password manager in your business, I can guarantee you that this is a problem that's in your business right now. And we know that the stats of businesses experiencing a cyber attack in the last 12 months increases all the time. Current stats show that about 92% of UK organizations have experienced a cyber attack in the last 12 months. And breach passwords or weak passwords are one of the most common reasons as to why this is such a big problem. The thing about cybersecurity is that people think it's some really, you know, overly complicated, kind of really techy thing. You know, it's fair to say most people think of cybersecurity from what they've seen in the movies, which is never a good way of looking at anything. The police always look really incompetent in movies, right? But in reality, it's not the case. And just like cybersecurity, it's a lot simpler than what 
you probably actually think it is. And, and it really comes down to getting the basics right. This is a problem that you probably have in your business. You're probably aware of this yourself. There's probably people sitting right next to you right now, potentially as you're listening to this, who are logging in to their company email with the same password they use for their Facebook account, or it's their dog's name, their child's date of birth, or any of the other stuff that I've kind of mentioned already. So how do you solve the problem? Well, solve the problem in a couple of ways. One way is having policies. So if you're a business that's got cyber essential certification, then you're probably going to have a password policy. You should have a password policy that tells people what they should do. So don't you know use any of the things I've just mentioned already in your password. Make sure you use unique passwords for every login, yada, yada, yada. All the stuff that we've been telling people for a long time. But the reality is, is that policies don't really work on their own. And as a business, you kind of need to give people a better way of doing it or an easier way of doing it. Because when you give people an easy solution to the problem, then guess what? The problem will get solved because people will use the tool that you give them. So as a business, what can you do to solve the problem? And before I get down into telling you how to solve this problem in your business, here's Annie with this week's Texas Tech Update. Hey, it's Annie with your latest tech update. Teams is one of the most useful tools for the hybrid way many businesses work these days. Our only complaint, it's a bit of a resources hog and can sometimes be slow. Great news, there's a brand new version of Teams that's rolling out right now. Microsoft has reimagined it from the ground up. It's twice as fast as the classic version and uses less memory and less disk space. With a new, simpler design, enhanced performance and improved security, we love it and think you will too. Oh, they're also adding in Copilot. This is an AI assistant that helps you stay on top of your tasks. It can summarize meetings, pull out actions and hunt down information for you. The rollout of new Teams is underway. Check now if you can install it. And if we can help, get in touch. That's your tech update. More next week. But first up, I just want to tell you a little bit about the IT services buyer's guide that we have. This is a free document on our website. You don't have to enter any information to get access to it. You just need to head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash buyer's guide and you'll be able to click the link and get the download. And this is going to give you loads of information to help you understand the questions that you need to ask any potential IT partner in your business or indeed just go back and ask these questions to your existing IT company and then you can help find out whether you're being served correctly and whether there's any gaps in the IT support services that you are being offered. Now, let's get back to the episode. So I was just saying that you can solve this problem by having policies within your business and, of course, some end-user security training on how to create strong passwords is always recommended. But ultimately, to solve the problem, you need to give people tools and technology is to the rescue as always. And what we would recommend is that you implement a password manager in your business. And I don't mean using the password manager that's built into Google Chrome. And I've had these conversations with a number of businesses where they think it's perfectly fine for staff to be storing passwords within their web browser. But then I point out to people that, well, that's not a good idea because the login that they have to Google is their own personal Google account which means all the passwords are not under the control of your business. So if someone leaves the organization, they will be taking all of the business credentials that they've stored in their password manager that belongs to them that you can do nothing about. You don't have control over it. You can't change the password to it. You can't lock them out of it. And the biggest problem is that you don't actually know what's in it. You don't know what passwords they've acquired in the duration of time that they've worked for you. So you don't even actually know what the risk is. Now you might say, well, we'll go and change all the logins and lock them out of all the systems they have access to. Well, that's fine. As long as you know what they have access to. The problem is, as I've just said, you've probably got no idea what they've got access to and what they've maybe acquired access to that they probably shouldn't have access to during the time they've worked there because staff will pass passwords to each other. So this becomes like the Wild West. Like, How do you control this? The only way to do that 
is to have a business password manager that all staff use. Here at M3, we are in the process of rolling out Keeper Enterprise Password Manager to our customers. Now, Keeper is the most secure password manager on the market at the moment. And we have partnered with them to be able to roll this out to our customers to help solve the number one problem that businesses have with cybersecurity. Now, a lot of people think that password managers just store passwords, right? But actually, they solve quite a few other problems too. And you can actually use your password manager to store sensitive documents or data. I'm sure if you're a business where you've got people that have to go out and drive for your company, you'll ask staff usually once a year for like, you know, an updated copy of their driving license or their passport or something like that. But how do they send it to you? Do they just scan it in? Do they email it? Do they take a photograph of it? Do they WhatsApp it to you? None of these things are very secure, especially when it comes to the kind of sensitive data you're talking about if it's a copy of someone's passport, right? What if there was a better way to do that? What if you could store that in an encrypted system that meets all of the government and military encryption standards out there? Keeper Enterprise actually allows you to do just that. So a member of staff could take a photograph or a scan of their passport or their driving license, and they can store that as a credential in Keeper. And then they can share that with you as the employer. So this data then is stored, cryptid, and it's very secure. So there's a second benefit to using a password manager. The other thing that you can do with Keeper is you can share passwords securely. So quite often in businesses, people do need to access the same account. You may have one login for a particular app or website that you use that multiple members of staff need to be able to gain access to. Now, as I said earlier, staff will share passwords with each other. They may just pass it on a post-it note around the office or whatever, but there's a better way to do that. And you can use a password manager to create the credential, store it, and then share it with other people. And then you can audit who has access to it. So you know in your business control who has access to these credentials. And then one of the other benefits that we can offer to our customers is personal use of their password manager. With Keeper, we can offer five personal licenses for employees, which means they can use the same password manager for their personal use as they do for business. Now, it's entirely up to an organization whether they want to allow staff to have personal use of licenses for the password manager too. But these are two separate systems. Think of them like two separate vaults where you've got your business stuff and you've got your personal stuff. This could be a really good idea because right now, staff are probably just storing everything in like their Google Chrome password vault or something. So being able to separate these things out and say, hey, this is where you store your business stuff. This is where you store your personal stuff. is a really good idea. One of the other common things I hear with password managers is people often think, well, if someone gets the password to my password manager, that means they can log in and access all of the passwords. Or what if the password management system itself gets breached? Well, I said earlier that Keeper is the most secure password management system on the market. One of the reasons for that is that every single credential that they store within the system, so every password that you store is stored with a different encryption key, which means if the system was breached or they were breached, then it'd be very difficult for someone to gain access to all the different credentials that are stored there. Now, you could probably spend a whole two-hour episodes talking about all the technicalities of how they encrypt the data and all the techie stuff, which, to be honest, a lot of it even I don't understand, and you guys certainly won't understand it, and it would be an episode that would put all of us to sleep. But you just need to know that we're talking about the most secure password management platform that you can put in place in your business. And one of the other cool things that makes this really easy to set up for businesses is that if you're already using Microsoft Azure Active Directory, which a lot of businesses will be, even if you've never heard of that, is a good chance that your business will be using this. That provides the ability for single sign-on or SSO, which means that we can quickly enroll all of your staff into the Keeper Password Management System, and they don't need to use a master password to log into the Password Manager because it automatically authenticates them through their Office 365 login. 
here's one of the things that I actually think is one of the coolest features of Keeper Enterprise, and that's being able to share passwords outside of your organization. Now, this actually happens quite often for businesses where they have to share login information with like their web developer or their accountant or someone else who's not part of the organization. So how do you do this? Well, a lot of people will send an email or WhatsApp or whatever, right? But there's a much better way to do that. And that is to not even share the password at all. And you're probably wondering, how the hell does that work? Well, basically, there's password masking within Keeper. So you can share a credential with someone that allows the password to be entered into a system without that person actually seeing the password. So that's really cool. You can also have that password masking feature enabled for your staff by default so that even staff don't get to see the password that was generated. It just gets entered into the website or the system that they're trying to log into. They log into the system. They don't care what the password is. And you as a business have complete control and an audit of all the passwords that are being used in your business. And the best thing about Keeper is they have apps for everything. So if you want to have browser extensions where you have the Keeper extension in Chrome or Edge or whatever browser you use, Safari works on iOS and Android. So you have the apps, you have the desktop app. So whatever system you use, you can get access to Keeper. So you can have this on your phone when you're out and about and on your laptop, your desktop or wherever when you're sitting at the desk. So like I said, this is a service that we offer here at M3 Networks. If anyone's listening to this, we'd like to discuss implementing Keeper Enterprise in their organization, then it's quite simple. You just get in touch with me. If you head over to m3networks.co.uk forward slash meetmark, you can pick a time in my calendar that suits you and we can have a chat about how Keeper can solve the number one cybersecurity problem that you have in your business right now. Intriguing Intel of the Week. One of iTunes terms and conditions states that you're not allowed to use their devices to create nuclear, missile, chemical, or biological weapons. Time for Giggle Bites. The oldest computer can be traced back to Adam and Eve. It was an apple, but with extremely limited memory. Just one bite and then everything crashed. So that'll do it for this episode. Be sure to check out texaspodcast.com, which has over 100 other episodes of content just like this one, all aimed at helping you to get the right IT and cybersecurity for your business. 